Greetings, pilgrims. Welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today I wanted to share with you a new feature I've added to our game project here. As you can see, we have these metal panels. So here are the panels we talked about last time. So we have a panel here, we have one over here. Got them all over the place. One over here, up here. So what I'm doing here is setting these up to do a bounce. I'm going to bounce the light along our cave here. So let me show you the effect and then I'll describe it and then I'll show you how we did, went about creating it. So my trigger is here in the corner, so I can stand here and look at the screen here. And when I hit the button, you'll see light bounces down our cave. Look at that, just pew, 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 pew. really cool. So as you can see, the light is coming in from the ceiling. After it hits this and reflects off, we have the first beam of light going this way. And then it bounces back and forth down our cave. And it's a really cool effect, and at the end here, it kind of just gets absorbed and collected by this uh, teleporter kind of lamp in the corner. So this is a really simple effect to do. The hardest part was really figuring out where I wanted these panels in my level here and then creating this model of the light beam to match. So again, I'll go over here and hit this. And this can be as fast or as slow as you want. You can kind of see it's slow at first and then it kind of speeds up. And all of that is adjustable. And I'm going to show you how all of that works. OK, so we drop out of this. And let's do our F11 and come back to here. So essentially, this is in two or three parts. So it's uh, one part is I'm using the interactable thing that we've been using for quite a while. So if you go back a couple episodes and follow through, I have links to the tutorials on that. You do the full tutorial for the link for the uh, to, for that to create your interactable object. Now from there, we're going to use that to trigger our effect. So our effect is essentially just a model and then a texture that gets dynamically changed. Okay. So the model is static, as you can see here, it just bounces back and forth. Let's take a look at the model itself. And of course, he's on the other screen. There you go. So here's the model itself. And it has been modeled to the specific area of the cave that it's going to be used in. So as you can see here, it's a very specific shape, and it follows that guidelines there. And it's using our material. I called it material test because I was testing the effect. You can call it whatever you like. And then the only other change I made was down here. In the collision presets, I did set it to no collision. Because after all, it is a light beam. You should be able to walk right through it. Now, ultimately, what I'm going to do is have a beam come shoot down from the ceiling, hit this, and then this will trigger. And then I want this to fade out afterwards very quickly. So you won't really see it for too long. It's just to get the idea that you've done something here where maybe you place this down, and then it triggers as effect. And then it's, that's what helps you kind of light up the caves a bit better. Okay, so let's take a look at the material first. So I bring up my material, let's see, mat test, there he is. Let's bring this guy up and take a look at him. And he's not too complex, so I'm going to step you through it, okay? So what we need is we need to start with a gradient. And the idea is you can see the effect here a little bit. It's darkest at the top and lightest at the bottom. And then this one happens to duplicate because of the, the nature of the beam that I made here. So. What I use is a text coordinate, because this is a red and green, two crossing gradients. And then from here, we use a mask node, and I'm just taking just the green, and that gives us this gradient. Okay? So then I create a scalar parameter. So if you right click and say scalar, scalar, like that, scalar parameter. And I call it mask amount. And I'm going to put that at default value of 1, uh, minimum of 0, maximum of 1. And we're going to pump this into an if node. And for this if node, this guy goes into the A. And for the A, let's see, we've got B is this amount. Then if A is greater than B, we want a color of completely 0, 0, 0. Okay? If A is less than B, then we want a color of 1, 1, 1. So constant white. So they're black or white based upon where we're at. So the idea is here is if I put this at 0.5, we should have a halfway mark here because half the values will be above and half the values will be below. And basically by animating this property, we can go from zero here to one here and we sweep across this texture. So that's essentially the logic that's happening right here. Okay. So then what I've done here is I pump this through a multiply to get into the opacity so that I could figure out exactly how translucent I wanted my light beams to be. And the rest of this is all cosmetic, really, for the shape of it. So taking this here, I'm going to multiply by a 0.5. Then I'm going to put that, push that into the sign. And that's going to give me 
black to white to black. And I'm going to throw that into a power, and I actually <laughs> don't end up using the power, but I was following another tutorial, and they do a power node here, but I didn't like how dark it got on the edges here, so I just went right from the sign into a multiplying of the color you want the light to be. And for me, that's white. So then I'm going to put that into the emissive color, and we're only using emissive and opacity. And if you look here, the material itself is surface, translucent, unlit. And that will give you just these two parameters. That's all we really care about, okay? So, with those two parameters set, and with all of this set, this is our material, and now we're going to reach in and animate this in the blueprint, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the blueprint now. So I go to my blueprints. I have a blueprint here for, let me find it, light beam bounce, and then I have the light example light beam. This is the one that we did for the actual code here. Okay, so... When you first get this, you're going to follow the other tutorials I linked to to create an interactable object, you're going to get this. I haven't changed any of the base parameters except for the event graph. Okay. So on the event graph, the first thing we're going to do is you'll get this event begin play and then a parent begin play. It just sort of extends that because we're saying, hey, this is a child object of a previously created object, so we want to make sure that when you create your interactable objects, you're going to right click on the parent and say create, you know, sub or create child. Yeah, create child blueprint class. class pardon me. And that's what we'll call this guy, the, the example beam. So this, because this is a child, its parent, we're going to go back and look at its begin play and say, is there anything we need to do there? No? Okay, then let's move forward. All right, so I'm going to create a dynamic material instance of the material that my current mesh is using. The source material here is going to be here. I'm getting the material, sorry. The target of the thing that is going to get the material is this. So I'm going to say mesh, drag that over, get material, source material for creating a dynamic instance of this. Okay. And what we're doing here is right at the begin play, we're going to set the scalar parameter of that mask amount to zero. And what that does is, you'll notice that when I start the start the level here, our light beam is technically here, but it's completely transparent because we've set that value to zero. And then when we trigger this, we're going from zero to one very quickly. And that's what does that, okay? So we started at zero, so that way we don't see it right away because it's not realistic, right? The light's not there yet. Okay, so then we want to see that value down here once we actually do the interaction. So doing the interaction, we're going to pump that into a timeline, and we're going to pump that out to, again, setting the same scalar parameter. This is just copied and pasted from here. We're setting that same scalar parameter off of the update of this timeline. Now, if we look at this timeline, I've got it set to two seconds because I wanted a little bit of time for you to actually see it. And then we're going from a value of 0 to a value of 1 over the course of the two seconds. And then, of course left click and drag to select both of these guys, <clears throat> pardon me, you right click and say auto. And that will create this nice sweeping curve for you. Okay, that's all there is to it. It's really that simple. So we're just using this event interact because we did those previous tutorials to create our interactable objects and really all that is is a fancy way to just kind of kick this off. All right, so you could trigger this via another event that you created or some kind of trigger so that's really not that, you know, important of how we get to it, just how it gets triggered, okay? So with all of that set, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the model in case you're curious. So I have that fired up here in Maya. So here's my scene in Maya. So my original concept art from the whiteboard behind me and brought that into here and scaled it up based upon the size of a cube in here. There it is, a cube of our player. So then this is the cave that we modeled, and you'll see here a couple of iterations of working through the cave, and then this is the actual cave that we used for the final you know, deliverable, but this cave is a copy of that, and then all I did was delete the ceiling so I could see into it. And then so then in here, I modeled this, and this is essentially um, a box, but then you take the box and obviously you stretch it to a point, and then I cut a division line in it, a harsh division line, then move the next series of it up here, cut the division line again, moved it up, and bounced it down the cave, okay? Now if I look at the unwrap for this, this will kind of explain how this works. So remember that gradient that we saw? 
goes from white to black, or black to white, depending on which way you do it. So each of these are unwrapped in series. So I'll show you what, what that means here. So I scale that down now. If we look at this from above, this is our first balance. It begins here at zero and goes to one, then to two, then to three, then to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I think. And if we look at this, if I go to face mode, you'll see that these faces are these guys. And then these here, and then these here, and they work their way down the down the, the uh, stack here. And the tops of these, so if I go now to UVs, we look at the top of these are right there, the bottom of these are right here, and you'll see the top begins here, and the bottom goes here. So it's going in the path that the light is going. And what this does is as that texture sweeps across these, you'll see that they get revealed in series. So you can have as many of these as you like in here. I happen to like the fact that I try to keep it to around 10 bounces or less, and then I just kind of stretch these out a bit. And these are all the different faces. I was doing some nice clean ones that are directly side by side. And as I got doing them, I said, you know what? We really have all of this space. So all I really need to do is just stretch them out. But really the important thing are these horizontal lines here. Just make sure that those are lined up perfectly so that the exact bottom of this group begins the exact top of this group. And then there's no delay at all. Now, if you separated them, there'd be a little bit of a delay. It would bounce, bounce, and then pause, and then bounce. So maybe you want to do that with like electricity or something, but not with light. Light should be pretty quick. And I could make these even larger or even smaller to create different delays in the light bouncing. So if you had a lot of bounces, you could do 100 bounces or whatever you want, but they just have to line up uh, vertically like this. So these, these horizontal lines have to be perfectly in, in queue. You know, bottom of this one begins exactly the same spot, the top of the next one. And if you do that, then you have your light bouncing back and forth very easily. Okay, so there we go. That is that. So we'll close that out. And I can provide this model if you guys really want, but um, it, this is very specific to this cave shape. So I don't think it'll be very helpful for you. But I'll show you real quickly kind of a quick demo of how I did this. So if I create a new box, let's move him forward a little bit. Let's scale him up. Okay, so there he is, right? And the way you want to go about doing this is, now that we have this guy, I'm going to go to my faces mode, and I'm going to delete the top and bottom, because the way that I'm doing my lights, they're bouncing off of something, so you're not going to see that top and bottom. Okay, so now let's select all of them, and we'll do a quick unwrap. There we go. So he's unwrapped now. So here's all four faces. And what you need to do is you need to make sure that your, let's move the shells apart. You make sure that your uh, values are sticking to that top and bottom. So I'll show you what, what that means. So we start with just one face, this face here, okay? So the light is gonna come from the bottom and go upwards, all right? So to make that work, I need to find my top values. Okay, these are good, top and bottom. Bottom and top, those are good. See, those are not good, those need to be rotated. So let's move over here and take a look. So. Top and bottom, top and bottom, so these need to be rotated. Okay, so what we want is, that should be a bottom one, and that should be a top. So they need to rotate this way. So I'm going to do one, two clicks on that. So bottoms, tops, there we go. And this guy is completely upside down, there we go. So one, two, three, four, now tops and bottoms, there you go. So this guy's all set. Now, the important thing to note is that for each segment of your light beam, so we have one segment here, one segment here, they all need to be equal on the chart. So for each of these guys, I would have to go to UVs and say, okay, let's, let's make sure that these guys line up at a certain point, and then these guys have to line up together, and then each of these would have to line up to those same points. So for here, I could do uh, vertices snapping. So I can snap all these together. Let's do that really quickly. There we go. Snapping. Well, selected. So now with all of these guys snapped together, obviously if we were to do something like a, a real model where we were baking something, we couldn't leave them all stacked on top of each other, but you could for this instance. It's a transparent texture. There's nothing real fancy to it. But if you want to be correct about it, we could go to our face here. And as long as they are 
correct in the sense that they don't go past that line. You can spread them out a little bit like this and you can see them a bit easier. They just all have to be in the same vertical space here so that they get revealed together. Otherwise they're going to look weird. And if you go into your, um, if you go into your uh, Unreal here and what I did was in the light beam example in this timeline, you can actually increase this, the time here. So what I did here was let's change this from two seconds. Let's put it to 12 seconds, okay? And then just grab this guy and set his time to 12. So now if we hit compile and save and we run it again, now it'll go really slowly and this is a great tool. You see, here we go. It's starting to go and see it goes, it's going slowly now. So I can walk with it and I can try to look and see where are the errors, you know? So when you're first doing this, and if you have one side, like say this face was flipped the other way around, if instead of top to bottom, he was bottom to top, then he would go the wrong direction. And I had that happen a few times, and I had to work out the right, um, the right angles for everything. But yeah, so this is a pretty quick and easy way to do this, and you just have to work out where this guy goes, or like I said, reach in programmatically and change it to whatever you like. You can make this go as fast or as slow as you want, based upon that timeline. So I go back to that timeline and something I would more realistically set is say something more like one second. Like you want this to go really fast because it's light bouncing around. Light is incredibly quick. So let's take a look at this and see what happens if we have it at a realistic value. See, that's more like it, you know. This quick, boom, we fill the cave in. You know, and then I would like it to glow a little bit, fade away, and then I would have some lights in, in the engine, have some lights, some actual light objects that turn on and glow after this is gone to kind of show the idea that, okay, you now have light coming in that is continuously bouncing around this space that kind of fills in a bit of the ambient light. That way you don't have to actually have them there the whole time. We, kind of, we, kind of, we get the idea, you know. So, yeah, this was a pretty neat effect, and I was really happy with how it turned out. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, again, we went through how to create the material here, and then using the keyframe here uh, for the timeline, we can adjust this the distance, um, the time for how long it takes. And then here we have the interaction, so we first set the parameter to zero so that it's invisible. And then we're going to go ahead and set it over time based upon how long we want this to last. And now we have a light beam that can bounce as fast or as slow as we want, and it's completely customizable based upon a, uh, a model that we can import. And you can make this model specific to your, your level. And uh, this is done specifically in Maya here, but you know, this is any 3D modeling package, you can do the same kind of thing here. Model the shape based upon your level. And then when you go back to Unreal, uh, I did have to go back and forth a little bit, but the, the ability to re-import an asset is very nice and handy in Unreal here. So if I bounce this off, and this is totally the wrong angle to do this at, but this first one, <laughs> this first one just breaks the laws of physics. But uh, once I got it set up, then I just went back and forth a little bit, adjusting it and then having my objects in the scene. So, but if you have this object as part of your overall geometry of the of the cave, then you could line them up perfectly, and then you could do some actual math to make sure you don't have impossible angles like I have here, but <laughs> just for demonstration purposes to, to kind of show you guys the effect and uh, to try it out. And yeah, we'll be we'll be polishing it, but uh, I, I think this is really cool and we've made a lot of cool progress with this. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed. So thank you again so much for all your kind attention. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything I can help you with at all, uh, that's what I'm here for. We'll make sure that everyone grows and becomes a better artist every day. So until next time, guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.